This is actually ridiculously untrue. When you're looking at specifically the United States, there are objectively certain cities that are more walkable than others. But if you compare U.S. cities to those in other developed nations, such as the Netherlands, you will find that we are nowhere close when it comes to city planning, making our cities more walkable and accessible. In fact, a century ago, and for most of American history, people were allowed to walk in the street. It was considered a public common. But over time, beginning, I believe, under President Hoover, we started transitioning to treating streets less like a public good and more like a place for vehicles. And since then, especially considering white flight and the creation of the suburbs in America, communities have only become less walkable. Because suburbs in most residential areas in the United States are actually more spaced out than in other countries, which results in two problems. One, they become less walkable and accessible for people, and two, they require more in taxpayer dollars in order for general maintenance and infrastructure. Which creates a whole other issue because of inner cities that have a higher population density and less square footage require less in taxpayer funding, but suburbs with a smaller population but more square footage require more funding, you essentially have a system that requires that people have their taxpayer dollars siphoned into a upper-class neighborhood. Or, to put it simply, the poor are paying more in taxes to subsidize upper-class lifestyles. But let's get back on topic to walkable communities. For the longest time in the United States, corporations, largely associated with the sale of oil and automobiles, have lobbied the U.S. government to gut public transportation and to make city planning less accessible and more car-dependent, as doing so would secure the prosperity of those industries for generations. Which is why, in the United States, we live in seas of asphalt where everyone is essentially required to own a car. Why we have such poor public transportation and why we do not yet have high-speed rail, which in turn congests traffic which makes it worse for drivers and dangerous for pedestrians and necessitates the allotment of more land and asphalt for parking, which spaces these communities out more and makes them even less walkable. So, as you can probably tell, there are many issues that arise from poor city planning in the United States. And there are many things that we can do to fix these issues, such as investing in public transportation, reevaluating the way that we build and organize our residential and commercial areas, getting rid of strodes, which is a concept that I didn't even touch upon in this video, but essentially is a combination of a street and a road that fails to do the job of either, and do something about the corporate lobbying that has resulted in these detrimental policy decisions. And of course, to wrap this up, as the username in the comments of this particular responder would suggest, I am most likely talking to a troll, but I appreciate the opportunity to springboard off of this concept. Because the more that I started to look into city planning in the United States, the more I started to realize this goes beyond walkability and car dependency. It also ties into our zoning laws and how different residential areas can be divided by class, and how these zoning laws rooted in class division not only restrict access to affordable housing, but also provide upper class citizens with access to better education because our schools are funded through property taxes. The way that American communities aren't just unwalkable, they're inherently classist, and they are only going to get worse unless we do something to change it.